Hello and welcome to this CUBE's presentation of the AWS Industry Technology Partner Showcase. This is season one, episode two, to kick off the series covering the partners from AWS ecosystem. We're talking about enabling global collaboration in game development. Obviously gaming's huge, we see a lot of activity. Obviously you've got to be coding those games as well. Timelines, CI, CD pipelining, all part of the cloud native. I'm John Furrier, your host. And we're joined here by Yegor Nabmov, head of Team City growth and marketing at JetBrains. A lot of developers using that software. Igor, thanks for coming on the uh, Tech Partner Showcase. Hi John, thanks for having me, happy to be here. So I want to talk about improving game development velocity through optimizing safety pipelines and developer productivity, that's the topic. Um, obviously game development, um, similar process, you got to code, you got to write code, um, things are changing radically. There's a lot more velocity in terms of expectations. It's hard, <laughs> like any software. You're dealing with large files. You got a lot of things going on. Take us through the high level points of what's going on in game development right now for the folks out there who, who are uh, in, the, in the trenches, the folks who are trying to figure out the best tooling, best platforms, best use cases, as it's got global teams all around the world working on these things. Take us through the high level points. Yeah, um, happy to do that. So we are JetBrains are generally focused on providing the best, best experience for software developers and software development teams. And we see game development as an industry as a very important part of that. For obvious reasons, it's a huge industry, but also it's, as you said, uh, it's in a lot of our hearts uh, that we're, we love gaming ourselves and we love to be helpful to, to those who develop the games. Um, um, and as much as uh, it's it's special, it's it's the first of, the first point is that game developers are software developers, mm -hmm. but there are certain specifics to think about. You already mentioned large files; that's one part of that, and this actually stems from the fact that the game development teams, as opposed to some other more classic development teams, they have to work closely with. Uh, you know, tightly with teams of artists and game designers and other professionals that are not so commonly uh, seen in the other, in some other industries, and that leads to obviously, um, yeah, artwork being a large part of the of the pipelines, um, and that leads to a large sizes of the repositories, files, projects, uh, which brings additional challenges that I think we'll touch on um, in our conversation today. Um, there's obviously also a higher reliance on. Uh, vendor controlled uh, core software such as uh, game engines uh, and now we're in the you know in the era of uh, game of, of, of game commercial game engines such as unity unreal engine godot uh, and some other ones as opposed to maybe 15 years ago when everyone was building their own game engines um, and this brings additional benefits to the game developers but also obviously some challenges and limitations in um, um, the the scope of work that they're doing and how they're potentially even limited sometimes uh, by that. And uh, the third point here is, uh, I would I would mention here that um, a lot of the release process, and I'd like to talk about the release process because I'm on the Team City team and we make it happen uh, uh, for, for, the, for the teams. Um, it is often also dictated and sometimes restricted by third parties such as publishers, such as hardware and console uh, manufacturers, um, and there's, there's even it's game development is one of the few industries out there that has this real life physical component of releasing their software on DVD, CDs, uh, and, you know, uh, distributing them through, uh, regular stores. Not a lot of industries that still do that, but, um, game development is certainly one of them. Um, and obviously with the rise of, um, online gaming, uh, massive, uh, RPGs, this is, this is not the case, but we still have. Uh, huge AAA um, titles that do run on consoles and the, that do need to deploy that way. So all those challenges and uh, specifics are important to to highlight when we talk about game development. Um, but I'm going back to my first point: game development is still software development. It's awesome, and, and absolutely, and a lot of stakeholders, as you pointed out. We're going to unpack that before we get into it. Just quickly introduce what Team Cities is, how that product is, what you're overseeing. That's the key to this: bringing everyone together. What is Team Cities? Team City a product. Right, so Team City is a continuous integration, continuous delivery platform that allows for building uh, build, test, and release pipelines um, and automating and orchestrating the whole process of what happens after a developer makes a code change and commits it to a repository. Um, there's, depending on what the company is doing, depending on what the team is doing, depending on what we're trying to achieve and the, the process in place, Team City can be a lot of different things, but generally it's a platform that allows um, we are talking about productivity and team velocity today, and uh, I like to think of it as a platform that allows to 
through improving uh, team productivity, it allows to uh, increase the velocity of the release cycles for, for the teams. Um, and uh, yeah, I only we are only talking within the scope of Team City, but generally JetBrains provides like everything that JetBrains does. Um, it, it it kind of boils down to improving the the productivity and efficiency of a single individual developer, and uh, Team City brings that to the to the team level, uh, helping teams deliver value quicker. You brought up earlier about the stakeholders. You are you know you brought up you didn't, there's a lot of storage probably involved. You have different stakeholders. Um, you got different platforms, a lot of things, a lot of moving parts in the process. Um, take us through the developer productivity elements here um, and how that affects the velocity in the game development overall and, and highlight kind of what Team City does because I think this is the key here. It's, I mean, it's self development, but imagine the dimensions of stake. It's almost like 3D chess <laughs> going on here. It's like a lot of things happening. Um, take us through those aspects of the moving parts and, the, and how that impacts productivity. Yeah, exactly, and I think we it, it's 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 good to start unpacking this from from generally what developer productivity is, why it's so important. And I think the business aspect of it is that um, it is so important because software development uh, costs as part of the whole budget of a project is is uh, estimated to be over sixty percent, depending on the project size and the project specifics might be, might differ, but generally it's a huge chunk of the whole budget. So improving developer productivity helps us either to cut down these costs or to improve efficiency and the, the amount of value delivered within this uh, within this budget. Um, and uh, it's not only about business. And uh, at JetBrain specifically, we love, love to think about developer productivity, productivity as a way to increase developer happiness. And it's hard to put a specific number of, on developer happiness, but um, there are some researchers that, that, uh, that state that on a good day, um, a developer could be up to 49% more productive and produce more value. So I see our, our mission is to increase the number of those good days uh, in the in the developer uh, and team lifetime. And generally uh, we go from developer productivity to team productivity, but it's important to know that, understand that uh, Tooling is quite important to improving that efficiency. And this is where we come in. Uh, we uh, we see within the Team City scope, we see that the CI City process uh, is sometimes crucial to not only team productivity, but also individual developer efficiency. Simply because whenever a developer, even if they're being extremely productive, yeah. produce a unit of work and then commit their code change into the, in the re repository, then the CI CD process kicks in. It does the automatic build. It does the automatic testing. It does the deployment uh, to a production or staging environment. But ultimately, the whole idea of this CI CD process is to provide feedback to this developer on the change that they have produced. And if this feedback is being provided not in a timely manner, this breaks the whole developer workflow. Uh, it makes them switch context, and context switching is extremely. Uh, extremely uh, damaging to the to the focus to the to the developer flow, and thus it leads to a lot of overhead um, if this context uh, is being broken. So what we focus on is to be able to provide to kind of fix this problem of long feedback times by um, paralyzing by pr providing the value as fast as possible to to the developer. And this is, by the way, where the the whole cloud um, story comes in because. Cloud is one of the enablers of how we can improve the speed of this of this feedback cycle and providing the the result of the changes back to the developers in the most efficient manner. Um, and there's a number there's a number of approaches that here, but yeah, let's let's, uh, let's unpack a little quick. Yeah. I love the two aspects here: the individual developer productivity in context to the team. By the way, because most a lot of virtual coding opportunities as well. Again, stakeholders. So you got the the developer in context of the team and the group and then the tooling and the platforms. A question for you real quick, if you don't mind me asking since you're here, is there a balance between that where this optimization focus on either side? How do you see that? How do you talk to that piece? Because this context switching point is huge because you know you have different personalities, maybe different categories of tiny developers. We got art, you mentioned art people, art folks, different stakeholders. Talk about this context switching dilemma because if that happens, you can see that things slow down people aren't as productive. Talk about the balance between tooling, optimization. What do you optimize for the most? How's that balance? Take us through the mindset there. 
Yeah, I don't think there's any dilemma here. The less context switching there is, the the more productive we are as a team and uh, we are as uh, as individual developers. And uh, yeah, don't get me wrong. There's there will always be context switches. It's just a question of how much? How, how to minimize those. So I think the the important factor when we talk about um, tooling like continuous integration tooling is to uh, make sure we can reuse uh, large portions of uh, of those build pipelines and make sure we, we don't do unnecessary work. And this is something we focus a lot within the Team City scope. Uh, we love to reuse the the what we call build chains, but they're actually like uh, build pipelines. Um, and if 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 something can be if some components don't need to be rebuilt rerun and the, the results of the previous runs could be implemented to the to fit the existing um, uh, launch of the pipeline, then we will do that. Awesome. Another aspect is parallelization, and again, I mentioned that uh, this is where the cloud technologies and the ability to spin up as many as many compute units as possible comes in, um, because uh, if you're running you know a set of one hour long um, uh, several hundred or thousand tests for for whatever build you're running. Um, you can wait for one hour, or you can split that in in uh, chunks of ten or six, and and wait for ten minutes instead of one hour. And again, the the ability to have this almost virtually unlimited uh, compute power uh, to do that is is what enables um, increases the, the the speed of this delivery. I was going to ask you. Um, there are additional mechanisms. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to ask you what the cloud was as an enabler for game development team velocity. Was that one? Is that the main one? Parallelization. Is there any other enablement that comes from the cloud? Yeah, so um, parallelization is certainly the the, the most uh, visible piece by by, um, by by the end developer. But generally, there's also the uh, aspect of uh, having less administration by the IT IT team, having the you know more democratized approach to uh, getting access to additional resources. Uh, we mentioned artifacts and large files being transferred for game development, and this is also that could be handled with a cloud-based artifact storage. Uh, and uh, storage management solutions. It's not only about storage, it's also about transfer. And, you know, back in the day, um, but even still in some of the industries, you need to transfer large blocks of data sometimes, you know, um, uh, through physical means, through shipping them with FedEx or DHL. Uh, but now there's solutions that obviously help uh, to avoid that. And in addition to that, cloud allows us to build um, more resilient solutions uh, to transfer data and there are options to um, minimize costs and to everything comes down to uh, either additional costs or additional value. And I think sometimes we, we would like to minimize the, the cost factor. And actually in, one thing we do in Team City as an, as an example of this is um, this is especially relevant and very much appreciated by the remote game development teams that have uh, uh, software development teams in different locations geographically. Um, is to minimize costs of transfer of data between different regions, between different AWS regions. We actually implemented a clever mechanism that, if if there is a request for this for this uh, artifact or a large file from a yeah. different region, we would we would source it not directly through S3 but through a cloud front front CDN. That reduces the cost to the team significantly, uh, keeping the 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 velocity of approximately the same level. That's awesome. Yeah, the build times aren't compromised. Costs are reduced on instead of moving all that big data around uh, the the regions. Good good. Good hack there, love that, um, that I won't say hack, but good addition. Um, I got to ask you about the platform engineering conversation. That's the hottest conversation we've had in, on the cloud native community right now. The future of DevOps is a lot of platform engineering. You got the role of data, you mentioned that. What is the future of DevOps and game development? How do you see the connection? You obviously more and more scale. Um, you got build times, version control, testing simulation, more and more metaverse coming, more and more game engines being embedded into the future user experience and expectations. I mean, I just see this kind of being the center of kind of UI and UX uh, for our future. Exactly, that's a great question. I love talking about the future of DevOps in, within the game development uh, scope. And I think one of the, um, there's, there's some more obvious things that are going to happen or already happen happening, such as the continuous integrations for integration for games. And then if previously game patches and updates were kind of released in larger chunks, now it's a more fluid process uh, and uh, develop, developers can make and deliver changes to production um, almost in real time. Same goes for infrastructure as code approaches that has also made its way. And I don't think it's already the future. It's probably something that's already happened for them for the most part. 
Um, I love the idea of uh, um, uh, thinking of uh, you know live ops, so something um, that that could be getting a more increasingly uh, crucial role within the game development scope. Um, this is uh, this has to do with post-launch uh, updates, improvements, uh, and expansions by, based on player feedback, analytics, uh, and some other metrics in in essentially real time. And I would also highlight um, uh, something that might be uh, left out during the, when we talk about DevOps and CI CD, but something that is becoming more and more crucial and uh, just mind blowing to me, and that is player driven development. So with platforms like like Roblox, it's already happening, and you know the 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 boundary between a developer and a player can sometimes become blurry. And I think we'll see more of that. And I would love to explore how. DevOps practices can actually facilitate this co-creation, sort of speak, process yeah. uh, that allows uh, you know player-generated content to be seamlessly integrated in, into the same uh, build, test, release pipelines for the games. Yeah, the um, there's probably yeah. the future of speed of thought. I mean, soon we'll be thinking about generative AI. I mean, that's why I want to get to this next question is because I think you beautifully teed that up. The role of generative AI is not just from an observability and optimization standpoint from the platform engineering side, there's an in-game development aspect that could be featured um, where in real time, generating <laughs> experiences is going to be something that's going to be, looks pretty obvious to me, at least from a gaming standpoint, natural progression. Um, that's going to be really, really hard. How do you see the role of generative AI and the in-game in, in development. So in-game and in-game development. So you got to develop the game and also in-game development. I can see that being compelling. Yeah, absolutely. And I think generative AI has been top of mind for many of us in 2023. Uh, and yeah, I, I was thinking about it, of it, about it in terms of uh, game production and game development. And I think, and we already start seeing first, first steps, first concepts and first games that are being actually created if not by um, Gen AI, but then, but then with 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 a lot of help from Gen AI, and I think this is what is going we're going to see more and more of uh, is that generative AI will augment and extend both the artist uh, side of the of the team and, and and the engineering side of the team. I don't really believe in it's going to replace the, any any of the any of the team members. It would rather increase that velocity that we've been speaking about and and and. Uh, Kind of blur the lines again between the the, the different departments, like similar to how um, you know uh, the the availability of cloud technologies and the ability to you know spin up resources somewhere remotely uh, at, at one uh, API call has blurred the line between dev and ops teams. I think we'll see similar similar effects of the Gen AI within the artist developer uh, kind of uh, communication and uh, um, production and. This will obviously, um, uh, or not obviously, I think this doesn't necessarily mean that this would lead in terms of production, that this would lead to a reduction in cost of production because we might not fully understand it yet, but uh, operational costs of AI, uh, generative AI are quite high. So yeah. we'll need to take that into account when we incorporate AI powered or AI agents within the game development teams. Um, yeah. <laughs> you got chat bots, you got co-pilots, you got predictive, that's the hot areas right now. I can see that translating over with more, more features. I got to ask you about this more nerdy stuff around cloud native because when I think about like data and I think about state of data, I think about versions of data, what's real time versus, you know, past and real time. So how do you see like the game logic and state play in here? Because now you got game state, you got logic, you're going to be in the cloud, you've got microservices, you've got a services model in the cloud. That must give you guys a little bit more visibility into how to use the data better, how to manage the state. What's your, how do you look at those two areas? Yeah, I think the, you said it uh, exactly right. There's going to be much more data produced and there's going to be much more data to not just look at. I don't think it's, it will be possible to look at with a human eye. Uh, we will actually have to imply, uh, em employ uh, a lot of the Machine learning um, algorithms and opportunities to uh, to extract extract insights, extract value out of that data, and I think it has to do. It ties back into the development lifecycle quite quite nicely, and we, it goes back to that live ops discussion of can we can we take live game data or player data or player behavior data and transform that into a product and build that into the uh, build test release and the CI/CD pipeline, deliver the value almost. In 
instantaneously or at least in a continuous manner. So I think data will play an, increase, an increasingly important role here um, from, from, from the standpoint of the de development lifecycle. And um, this goes into, of course, the, this will also power the or empower the developer uh, by giving them a lot of insight into how their code, how their the the work value that they're producing is is affecting the player. Yeah, I think AI gaming two hot areas for de if developers are out there watching. If you're not into it, if I was in my twenties, I'd definitely be doing it for sure. Um, two hot areas. Igor, I love love the conversation. Um, Talk about Team City, JetBrains. What's on the outlook for the product side? You're, you're seeing some growth. You're seeing some traction. Whole other next generation developers are coming in. You you hit on some of the the trends around how games are changing inherently, which is awesome. Um, there's a lot of lines blurring. A lot of stakeholders. A whole other generation coming. What's the outlook? Oh well, yeah, it's, it's it's a very exciting time. I think for all of us, but um, also within the from inside the. JetBrains, it looks quite exciting. There are a lot of the new products that are being either brought to the market right now or being worked on at the, at, as we speak. I think one of the hotter ones are AI, is a, our AI assistant uh, that is uh, currently available the, as a limited access product within the, our intelligent uh, integrated development environments. Uh, you could get access to that. There's also a whole growth of products and solutions that has been developed for the remote development solutions and uh, giving the ability to the developers to you know connect to a remote environment and get bigger uh, resources, a buffier machine uh, and things like that. There's also a scope of enterprise solutions that we are currently bringing to market that will improve the efficiency of managing your of your development tooling on the org level. And as for Team City, we're currently working on a platform that, that has a code name of Team City Pipelines that will streamline the, the build test release pipelines for the developers, for the game developers, um, uh, by bringing in built-in intelligence and uh, uh, that would target the, you know, that would have the efficiency and saving costs uh, in the process as the as the core aspect of the of the product. So we, yeah, we're looking forward to all new um, products and improvements that are going to come out really soon. and. Uh, game developers are one of our one of their, our favorite types of customers, simply because they love to push the envelope to the limit, <laughs> and they love to they love to use the most out of their out of our tools and out of all the technologies. So I personally like love the game development market before that. Yeah, it's super cool. I wish I was uh, a good gamer like I was in the old days. Um, I'm not as fast in my reflexes. Um, plus I'm a keyboard, but the keyboard's back. But anyway, great to have you on. Final question just to end the segment. You know, with cloud and this next gen, one of the things people always want to know about is what's the heavy lifting that gets abstracted away so that people can focus their creative energy on um, doing what they love, which is building. What would you say when people ask you, what is the big thing that's happening uh, in your world around taking that undifferentiated heavy lifting and making that kind of go away with cloud technologies and the new tech? Yeah, yeah. I would say I would say compute. I would say that uh, unlimited parallelization and the un, the lack of necessity to manage so many uh, agents and and think about the all the compute hardware and uh, that you need to spin up for for your workflows. And I think this gives the development teams the almost unparalleled ability to run as many as many build pipelines they they'd like and to increase the velocity. Uh, of the of their software development yeah. almost in, instantaneously and almost unlimited. Uh, so I would say that's the big point from from my perspective from within the CI CD scope of things. Um, so yeah, I love it because of that. Igor, thanks for coming on. Igor Nebma, head of Team City Growth and Marketing at JetBrains, here on the AWS Technology Partners Showcase, season one, episode two. Igor, thanks for coming on. Really appreciate your time and and for the folks, thanks for watching. See you next time. Mm -hmm.